What's up guys, it's Michael here. In this video, we're going to cover how do you fill out a 1099 NEC and a 1099 miscellaneous form. This is going to be a, a video that's going to be pretty long. So there will be timestamps down below and on the video if you are looking for specific information and topic. So let's get started. Before we get started, can you please hit the like button down below and the subscribe button, just smash it because YouTube will notify other people who need this information. And if you click it and help out this channel, it'll be greatly appreciated. So let's get down to it. So it's a very long video, like I said. So we're going to break down an introduction of 1099 NEC. So in Form 1099 NEC, it is for each person in your business whom you paid at least $600 during the year. This payment would be for people you pay for, for like services performed by a person, a company who is not your employee so keep that in mind not your employee and going down form 1099 miscellaneous is other payments that is not a service that is over six hundred dollars for things such as rent prices and awards and other income payments so basically the gist of it is anything that you pay out to other people that's not considered employee in your business or your company so you're mainly looking at like contract work why do you need a form at 1099 for the IRS and why you need to send a copy, which we'll get down in a later video on topic. We'll show you how to fill it out step by step. It's basically holding your hand. So first part, you want to take deduction for expenses that you pay others for. So if you own a business, 1099 and you hire as a contractor is your friend. Going down to number two, if you don't want to pay penalties for not filing a 1099. And number three is, of course, you want to minimize tax payment that you have to make because you receive a 1099 form from others. Going down the list on business tax returns, if you own a business, that's what it's mainly for. Regardless of corporation, partnership, or sole proprietorship, the IRS will most of the time ask you to make payments requires 1099 filings. And the IRS requires a form of 1099 for each person you have paid during a year. So as I mentioned, $600 within a year. So every person that goes over that, that's not employee, needs a 1099. And at least $10 in royalties or interest. So it can include $600 in rent services, such as lawyer, handyman, repair, drivers, delivery, temporary workers who are not on your payroll, as long as they are not a corporation. Well, if you don't file, you know, simple as that, you'll get penalized. It'll vary between $50 to $110 per form, depending on the past deadline due. So make sure to pay it out. And you can have a minimum penalty up to $550 per statement with no maximum. So it's a big deal. When should the 1099 form be prepared? It'll be by January 31st of next year. So basically, when you file your taxes, for beginners, it's usually the year before it. So for 2021, for example, you'll be looking at for before um, January 31st, 2022, and you're filing for 2021. So first step where you get the form, there will be a link down below for IRS online for free, and you can get these from Staples, Office Depot, or Amazon, or you can call the number. So this whole entire section article will be linked down in the description below. And also there will be timestamps. So go take a look at that if you're looking for more specific information. If not, we're going to carry on. And also well, you will have, number two, you'll have a summary of the total payment per person you have paid. So the amount of money you gave them as a contractor, you must have a statement for that. Going down the list, you will have a form W-9 filled out by the person who you have paid. This is very important because you have them to provide and sign the form before you pay them. And going down the list, I'll leave a link down in the description below, including this format of this whole entire video. And it'll be a link to the IRS for 1099 NEC form. And it'll be a link to the 1099 miscellaneous form. Going down the list at least $10 in royalties or broker payments in lieu or of dividends of tax exempt interest, meaning at least $600 in rents, prizes, rewards, other income payments, you have med medical and healthcare payments, you have cropped insurance payments, and you have cash payments or for fish or other aquatic life you purchase from anyone. The list goes on, right? So breaking down, trying to make this quicker. In general, engage in trade of business of catching fish. Generally, the cash paid from no notional principal contract to an individual partnership or estate. Also, payments to an attorney and a fishing boat proceeds. So basically, people want to get around this. They try to catch them. So just, you know, pay your taxes, get it over with. You will have no penalties. 
So in addition to use of Form 1099 miscellaneous, you use report direct sales made of at least $5,000 of consumer products to a buyer for resale anywhere other than a permanent retail establishment. And where do you send the form? Buy online. The link will be down listed in the description below. So you need to look for the forms. I'll guide you there and how to fill out the forms. That will be the next part of the video. Before I get to how to fill out the form, please click the like button down below and the subscribe button. And also comment because I see not enough people comment who watch my videos. So I want to understand what type of problems or questions you guys have so I can make a video deciding on that topic. I'll be also creating a Discord channel specifically on personal finance and other types of money making opportunity that you can learn and learn about the financial trade in America. So let's get back to it. So see you on the other side. Also, I forgot to mention one more thing. Here on the buff is going to be a list of 1099s and possible 1099s I'll do in the future. Now we are going to show you how to fill out Form 1099 Miscellaneous and Form 1099 NEC. What is the difference between the two 1099? 1099 Miscellaneous is for price or rent or expenses you pay out at least $600 or more within a year. On 1099 Miscellaneous, payments for service should not be reported on this form. Payment for service should be reported on 1099 NEC. So the difference between the two forms is on service. If it's a service, payment for service, reported on 1099 NEC. If a payment is not for service, then you report on 1099 miscellaneous. So that is the main difference. So let's go through 1099 miscellaneous first. Here's what you can see on the screen is the 1099 miscellaneous information form. First of all, you put in on the first box, you put in your own information, your name, your address, and your telephone number. On the second line is the payer's TIN number. The payer's TIN number is your ID number. If you are a business, a corporation, um, partnership, or is a legal entity, you may have a federal ID number. If you, the payer, is an individual, then you're going to put in your social security number over here. The third line right here is for the recipient's ten, uh, the TIN number, tax identification number. That is the federal ID number or the social security number of the recipient, the person who you make payment to. Recipient's name is the person you pay money to their name is going to be here, their address is going to be on this line, and the next one is going to be the city, town, or country where they're from. Account number, this most, if you have account number for this taxpayer, then you put in the account number. Uh, sometimes you may not have account number for them. You can leave it blank. FATCA filing requirement. If the recipient is a foreigner, then they may subject to FACA filing requirement. In that case, you check the box. Now, on the right-hand side of this form is where you put in the number, the dollar amount you pay to the person. The first one is rent. Rent, you enter the amount, any amount you pay $600 or more during the year, you put on line one. So rent, it can be the real estate rental payment for office space, or you rent equipment, a machinery, you can put it right here. So any rental payment, that is not for service. So it's for rent. The second one is royalties. Royalties, royalty on this form is the only one that have a very low limit. It's not $600 or more. So if during the year you pay anyone $10 or more, $10 or more, you should put it right here as a royalty payment. The third line is other income. So if you make payment for $600 or more, you are required to report it right here. And this on this line can include a price 
awards that are not for service perform. Let's say you have a sweepstakes not involve wages, meaning that is a prize going to give out the prize you pay to a winner. So that is not a wages and not for servers. Then you put that number right here on line three. Line four is federal income tax withheld, meaning any of this payment, if you withheld federal income tax from it, then you need to put that dollar amount right here. For example, if you gave out a ten thousand dollar. A、uh, prize and reward to someone, and you withheld a thousand dollar as federal income tax, and which you pay to the IRS. That one thousand dollar need to put it right here. The ten thousand dollar need to put on line three as other income to the person who received the payment from you. Number five is fishing boat proceeds. Fishing boat proceeds is for. All proceeds from sale of catch, or you pay make payment to crews in the fishing boats. Those are the payment should be reported on line five right here. This is not very common in in practice. Number six is a medical health care payment. If during the year you make any payment for medical and health care. Uh, expenses, for example, you make medical payment for your employee or related to work for your business, and that payment is six hundred dollar or more, pay to a, a doctor's office. Then that number should be reported on line six right here. Line seven. Line seven is payer make direct sales of five thousand, uh, five thousand dollar or more. So you need to make a check mark right here, meaning that if during the year you make payment to someone for five thousand dollar or more, that person is going to take the consumer product for resale. You need to give a ten ninety nine miscellaneous to the recipient, and by checking this box, box number eight. Box number A is for substitute payment in lieu of dividends or interest. So if you make any payment, total payment for at least ten dollars, then to some received by broker or for customer, then you need to report right here. And again, just one correction right here on this form,、uh, royalty have a minimum payment of ten dollars, and also. Right here, number A also have a minimum dollar amount of ten dollars. Rest of them is six hundred dollar or more. Number nine is the crop insurance proceeds. This one only apply to farmers. So if farmers receive six hundred dollar or more payment or proceeds from insurance company, the insurance company would put a dollar dollar amount of the payment on line nine. Line ten. This one will happen to a lot of small business. Is for gross proceeds paid to an attorney. So if during the year you make payment, uh, for six hundred dollar or more to a lawyer in connection with any legal services, regardless the recipient is individual or corporation, you need to give them a ten ninety nine and put the dollar amount on line ten over here. Line eleven is pretty self-explanatory.、Uh, is for fish purchase for resale. So if you purchase、uh, fish from someone else and yet you use that fish and gonna sell to other parties, that dollar amount you should put it right here. The purchase price should put it right here. And number twelve mostly apply to larger corporation. So small. Business. If you don't have a four four o nine a deferral, you don't need to complete this、uh, this line. Same as thirteen. Thirteen is the、uh, golden parachute payment. If the payment is、uh, golden parachute payment, then you put a line thirteen、uh, right here. Also for fourteen. 
For 15, it's a state income tax withheld. It's the same as line four right here. Line four is the report for federal income tax withheld, which you pay to the IRS. And 15 is the state income tax you withheld from the tax from the payment you make to the recipient, and you you make that payment to the state government. Number 16 is your state payers. A state number. So if you have a state account number, you should put it right here. And to that state, how much state income to the recipient. So let's say you have a rental payment right here is $1,000. Then the property or the the recipient is in the state of New York. So right here, you need to put the state income number and let them know this on 16th, this is a New York state. So that's it for Form 1099 miscellaneous. So the next one, we're going to talk about Form 1099 NEC. So this form is very common. It's commonly seen in small business and large business as well. So who will receive this form? You normally hear a lot of small business or a freelancer. They said that, oh, I got a 1099 income. So most of the time they refer to this form. 1099 NEC is the form to report non-employee compensation payment, meaning that you make payment to someone for their service for $600 or more during the year. That should be reported on 1099 NEC. So we have an example right here. What you need to do, first of all, you complete your information on the first section. In this example, is Z Builders is the payer who make the payment to others for their service. And Z Builders federal ID number. And this line, you're going to put the recipient's social security number or federal ID number, and the recipient's name, address, city, state, and zip code. And again, if this is a foreigner, then you may want to check this box to for FECA filing requirement. And now, in this example, it's 5,500 is Z Builder paid to Ronald Green in the year of 2020. So this is non-employee compensation. So you put it right here. What is considered non-employee compensation? Is the payment you pay for services and the person who is not an employee of yours. Let's say you pay a handyman for $5,000 to come in to repair something in your office, in your business that you need to give them a 1099, report the payment on a 1099. Or you have a mover come in, help you move the office, you pay them $600 or more, you also need to give them a 1099 NEC. Line four is a federal income tax withheld. In certain cases, you need to withhold income tax from the tax payment. That amount is going to report it right here. If you make the payment to a foreigner, one example is a good example. If you hire someone who is a non-U.S. person, performs service for you, and that person is not your employee, and they perform the service in the United States, in that case, you are required to withhold federal income tax. In that case, like, well, we use this number, 5500 as an example. Let's say you withheld $500 from the payment. You're going to report 5500 the total gross payment on line one. And then the federal income tax withheld $500. You're going to put it right here. And for line five is for the state income tax withheld. If you withheld any tax from this payment, then you need to put it right here on line five. Line six is uh, the California or California or New York or whatever state you are in. You put this, your state number over here and put the state income. So that's it. That's an example for the two form. 
If anything going too fast, you have any question, please、uh, write to us, and we can、um, give a more detailed explanation. So next one's how you file this form, where you can file this form. You have couple options. You can file them online.、Uh, you can use third party services, or you can send in a physical form. So where can you get the form? That the cheapest way is,、uh, you call the IRS or go to IRS online to obtain the form from them. Request a form; they will mail it to your house. Then you just fill that out the form and send it back to them. And where you can send it, you basically you can go to depends on which state you're located in. If you go online, pull out 1099 instruction, you can find the address in there. So right here, they have a table in the instruction and show to you where you can send the form. Or another option is that you can use a third-party service. Go to track1099.com.、Uh, you pay them a small fee, about ten to fifteen dollar per form to. Fill the form online and submit it electronically.、Uh, there's another option you can do. This is going to take a little bit longer, but it's free. You can go to IRS fire. dot irs. dot gov to log into the account and use the IRS service and submit the form directly. So that's it for 1099 miscellaneous and 1099 NEC. It's pretty simple, so most of the people will use that for rent, for other payment or other income, or non-employee compensation payments. So, if you have any question, please let us know. Leave us a message. Let us know. Thank you. If you like this video, please click the like button down below and the subscribe button with the bell notification icon, so YouTube will notify you each time I upload a new video. If you find this video very useful, including the 1099s and the W2s, and later on, including 1040s and so forth, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel because it'll help me out a lot. I'll also include a Discord link and a Patreon link down below in the description in future videos. Thank you so much.